Zoe's extraordinary playlist is an emotional roller coaster where Zoe encounters people in her life unknowingly singing to her about their intimate feelings with song and dance. I'm Rob LaCuria, Senior Editor at Gold Derby. I am here with Lauren Graham, who plays Zoe's boss, Joe. Lauren, Zoe's is unlike anything else on TV these days. It proves how vital it is these days to empathise with each other and have a good laugh and a good cry. How much do you love that the show wears its heart on its sleeve? Um, it's what I am always looking for in um, something, in a project. And um, I just really felt the way I came into the show was sort of odd, but I, I had knew, knew about it because I'm friends with Jane. And, um, and even in the, when she was trying to decide uh, whether she was going to do it or not. It just really felt special to me and hopeful. And um, I mean, there's nothing more transformative than a musical to sort of lift a story, you know, to another level and, and give all the characters um, another way to express themselves, another way to um, another color. And yeah. I just loved it and 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 it continued to surprise me you know it was a little bit of a of a not a gamble but I was in development on a couple of things and so it was very appealing to me to, to be I guess technically I'm a guest star although yeah and I, I ended up I was in too many episodes so I have to be a supporting person which is yeah. fine <laughs> um but um but I wasn't bound to the show uh and and it was uh just really fun to be there supporting my friend, feeling really collaborative. And um, it was just, you know, we had this phone call yesterday because the show got picked up and yeah. Austin, the creator of the show, told us all at the same time. And I, I just realized, you know, what an incredible group they are. And I just felt lucky to be there. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, Zoe's just being picked up. Congratulations. Will you return? I think so. I, um, you know, everything's so up in the air. I am, uh, I'm doing a, a series, The Mighty Ducks for Disney Plus. Yeah. And we had just done the, and that's 10 episodes and a half hour. And we had just done the first episode. So Zoe's is 13 episodes and an hour. Those schedules will not completely overlap. They'll, they'll, there'll be some room and it's just a matter of, of how many, but, um, yeah, now it, and now it feels like my home, you know, so um, I, I wouldn't want to, to lose it. Also, because I had replaced someone, it, it took a minute to kind of get that character going. And um, I just think there's so many places for her to go. And it is something that I never get to do. You know, I'm usually playing like fun loving buddy or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. really want to call it. And this was so such a different um whatever all the cliches actors use but such a different muscle and such a different headspace to be in um it was really fun well let's talk about joan because like initially to me she came across as a little prickly and she's demanding and i figured she'd be like the bitchy boss but that's not her at all we end up figuring out that she's really quite vulnerable she's supportive she's actually a really good leader and boss to Zoe, um, was it fun? Was it fun exploring that other side of her as the season progressed? For sure. I the conversation I had with Austin, um, and one thing I want to say about him too, which is, I've had all you have all different relationships with your boss. You know, the person yeah. who creates the show, and he, to his uh, better or perhaps detriment is so inclusive is so like wants to hear from everyone and we had such fun conversations um and I think maybe because I don't know it's just it was a different process and and in those conversations I said to him you know let's find a way to turn the like bitchy boss into something more more complex and more interesting and grounded really in in what what this woman probably hasn't had too many female friends on her way up the ladder in Silicon Valley and she's had to fight really hard but I just definitely didn't want to do like I didn't want it to be um that she's threatened by Zoe or doesn't want to help her I just thought those are I don't we've seen that and it, yeah. it doesn't feel real it never feels real to me anyway and and um but I did enjoy the prop the idea that um 
she's so obsessed with work and smart that she's just really walks around frustrated all the time. Like, why isn't everyone doing their job exactly, you know, as, why isn't everyone as obsessed with work as I am? And, and it gave her kind of a loopy place to go that was really, really fun. And then, you know, some of those musical numbers were like, I'm breaking a baguette over my knee. Like you get to, you know, what you get to really explore the, uh, what is the furthest expression of this person's frustration, you know, in song, you can even go, she can do crazier things. That was really fun. Yeah, it's actually quite accurate um, in corporate world. Um, she's really highly strung, clenched. And so I, I could see a lot of your performance was her being like that and then slowly loosening up. Let's talk about the musical numbers because you've you raised them. Like, um, Wrecking Ball is one where you really got to belt out a tune because you've got a background in singing. You, you can actually carry a tune. Maybe some people didn't realise this. But we should be talking about TikTok because that was, if you don't mind me saying, uh, sassy, sexy Lauren Graham. And um, <laughs> I like sassy, sexy Lauren Graham. I think that was actually really fun to see you in that light. We don't see that very often. So was that fun to do? It was fantastic. I mean, I... I got to, you know, at this point, um, I, I'm interested in what else, you know, and, and I'm interested in um, just trying to continue to grow creatively. But when Mandy Moore came to me, first of all, I didn't really know the song. Um, and people and would comment from you're not a big Kesha fan, then I'm guessing. Like, I, I mean, Kesha I'm fan. just my, my music, my musical knowledge stopped in like REM, maybe yeah. <laughs> YouTube. Okay. It was I'm like sorry. the last, you know. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> but it it was it was such an important song for her because it's really this kind of break. You know, she's breaking out and and um, and celebrating freedom. And when Mandy, you know, Mandy. Moore, the choreographer, um, does these pre previs where she will block her idea for the dance with one of her dancers, and then she'll come discuss it with you and show it to you and get your feedback. And she's just fantastic. And she and then she was like, and then you get up on the bar, and then and I was like, I'm sorry, hold, what? Excuse me, like <laughs> what the? She was like, yeah, and then you're gonna fall into his arms and he'll catch you. And I was like, no, 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 Mandy, no, no, no. And then on the day you know, one of the, you just have to commit. So I just really, I had to flip a switch. Like maybe I don't identify as sassy, sexy, but I do today, you know? And I, and then I, then I became like obnoxiously unstoppable. I was just like slithering down poles and stuff. And, 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 um, gosh, it was just, just the opportunities, you know, are, are, it reminded me because I had sort of had a few years of more writing and really feeling frustrated at the material I would get sent and, and maybe losing some of the things I liked to somebody else. Like it was just a funny transitional time. Um, and I felt so thankful and inspired again. And, and that's something I'd sort of was getting to the place where I was like, maybe I should do a medical drama, which is like, I can't, I could never, and, you know, or whatever. I just couldn't find something that really sparked joy. <laughs> and this did. I'm so glad that you found it. All right. I was watching this um, cast reunion thing online that you guys all did the other day. And you talked about your first job as being like a lawyer and you were like being chewed out by the, the judge or something. Like, I don't know if you recall mm. that. I, yeah. imagine, I can't imagine you going back to roles like that after all this time. Um, in fact, if you don't mind, I'm going to put this to you to see if you agree. Because this is, I've always had this theory about you in particular, like I do with many performers. Um, you've been fortunate to play relatable and nuanced characters over your career, right? And this one's another one of those. But the reason why we seem to, um, we're attracted to your characters is because you've got this interesting vulnerability underneath the confident exterior uh, when you're playing them. And I'm just wondering if that's something that occurs to you, like Lorelai was like that, Sarah Braveman was like that, Jones like that. Is that something that is just you or is it something that you're thinking about giving these characters? First of all, thank you. That's a nice thing to have to hear. Um, I guess it's a case by case basis, but uh, 
I'm always thinking about the difference between what people say and and how they're how they're really feeling and I never think of I don't think I've played any character except maybe Shakespeare back in drama school who's saying what they mean in in a very linear way and so I'm always trying to think of what what's the other d dimension especially in these because all those shows just to some degree are comedies and even that show that you were referencing where I'm a lawyer that was a half hour sitcom yeah where I was like I was like a jokey lawyer <laughs> um but yeah I'm just always thinking about the humanity and and especially in the case of Joan I just really don't believe in stereotypes I just I I I, I don't think it's interesting to watch or or play and um so I, I was thinking a lot in, in the case of Joan about how hard she's had to work to get there. I mean, you're not consciously thinking of it in a scene, but when I, it's, it's almost like I, I'm visceral. And so when I kind of put something in my body, it sounds, you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> it, <laughs> it, yeah. It's just kind of, it's, it's finding where something lives. Like, and, yeah, and yeah. Joan she lived in a lot of like, <sighs> you know, Get the, the, like it's a speed it's finding like what her tempo is and then what's the counter to that and the counter in in her case is marriage crumbling money doesn't mean anything it didn't buy her happiness her you know company is potentially in jeopardy she doesn't understand why she doesn't have more friends you know that was the thing I thought about and 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 we got to improvise in this one scene where I'm giving her a pair and, and I, it, it, it originally was something else where I go get her something fancy. And I said to Austin, I said, I don't think she would know what to get a friend yeah. as a present. Like I said, she'd get her something that is totally wrong. <laughs> and that's where the, the Manila black shoes came from. Yeah. It's way too expensive to give an employee. Nobody gets it, somebody's shoes as it get like it's, it was just wrong. And then in the scene, you know, I didn't know how to kind of give it to her. I kind of shove it in her, like <laughs> it, things like that, I, you know, things like that, that to me, that's what I like live for as an actor is those little pieces of behavior because it tells us everything about who this person is. And it's both. It's like, yes, she's the boss, but also she's like a little, feels vulnerable and doesn't know how to have friends. And so yeah. that's a dynamic that, you know, is kind of fun to uh, find. And, and yes, I hope I, think about that with all the characters also who feels who walks around feeling confident i don't really know that many people <laughs> so, like, you know, I, I mean great I, but no yeah great but i don't personally necessarily know what that feels like so maybe that's what i'm bringing to it you know yeah. i'm always thinking like what what are they worried about yeah and i think like to go back to the beginning of this interview um this show this show does that because it's obviously about what people are thinking and feeling that, that they're not saying. That's the bottom line. Right. Um, so this, that leads me to this. The, the fans of this show have really taken to it because it's made them feel something. Those shows out there that do that, like, for example, Parenthood was like that. This Is Us is like that. And so is this show. Um, have really become a sensation on social media. And when the finale happened and Zoe's dad, Mitch, died and then the cast sang American Pie, the outpouring on social media for real grief was really astounding. What were your thoughts and, your, and on the feedback that you were getting on the finale? Oh, it was just such a special um, thing to be part of. And, um, <laughs> and you know, it's very um, real to Austin who lost his dad to this disease. And that's where, uh, a, a kernel of the idea came from so to know that um and was very moving and it was a lot of emotional uh time on that show uh, you know you can't feel it unless we are feeling it at least to some degree i mean as actors we do it differently but it, it is so much heart the show and 
And that day, it was a one -er. It's a very long song. We were doing, you know, a time lapse thing. So there was just this dance that had to exist among all these people who we'd spent all this time with and we're all kind of there for each other and we're there for, to honor, hopefully, Austin's memory and memory of his dad. And that's when you feel, um, gratified, I guess is a word, but mm. it's, it's the highest, it's what you want to do, um, that you, you don't always get there as a performer is give something away is give a piece of yourself a, a way in order to ha give someone else an experience. I mean, that's the job, that's the hope, you know, and so often we feel we fall short. You know, I tried to give you this story or this character, this, you know, uh, moment and, mm -hmm. Oh, it didn't, you know, it didn't work out or the lighting was bad or the thing, like, you know, the commercial can you know, I don't know. So that we had that space, it just made people feel really good. And, you know, we have, I don't know if this has been out there, but there was a video that's almost as riveting of everyone on, around the monitors, you know, watching, holding their breath, hoping that this is going to be the take, you know, that nobody drops anything and everybody, and it's, it's just that collective kind of, we're all truly in this together to, to try to bring you some entertainment. It's just like, I find it really moving. Um, and yeah. I found that experience moving and yet then yes, to hear from people. Um, Cause you know, I've been doing this a while and I don't necessarily hear from my high school friends anymore. They're like, oh yeah, you were on the Tonight Show. Anyway, um, yeah. we're going to lunch and you know, they don't care, which is good. And yeah. um and but I I heard from people more than more than usual that it really was touching for them and and that means a lot. That's so cool, and I hope I hope it gets like a nomination for directing or because I think the direction of that episode was just a plus. But that's a whole other conversation. Yeah. Speaking of making an impact on people, um, I mean you you know this you know that people love Laurel I Gilmore right? It's something it's a character that many millions of people have taken to their heart. Um, a couple of years ago, we spoke to you and you said that your time on the show went by in a blur, but you only took stock in what it meant to you and how rare a part it was much later. So now we're even further away from Lorelai and even the, the, the Netflix sequel series. What does she mean to you, given that she means so much to so many other people? Well, it hasn't, um, I think being able to do the Netflix revival, um, put her back in my, first of all, anything I ever got to do in show business came from that. So I'm never not thinking about it. I'm never not thankful. I'm never, you know, these are friendships with Amy Palladino. Like, I, you know, you, as, as I sa have said to Jane many times regarding Zoe's, you hope you get one of yeah. these where it's a marriage of, I've seen Jane, perform, you know, act, sing, dance, be emotional, be an athlete. Like there's no, I, you couldn't picture another person in that part. And, and if you get one of those, you know, and Amy used to say this too, Amy now has two of those. Yeah. <laughs> She's, Mrs. Maisel, which is a much bigger commercial success or whatever. But I, I, I treasure the experience of being able to come back around and have those words in my mouth again and have, you know, bring, bring her back. It, 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 it meant, it means the world to me. And, um, and I, and I almost have to never hold anything up to that, you know, level in a way. It's like, maybe I'll get to do something else that's different and interesting. Maybe I'll get to produce and then be part of the, you know, which I am on the ducks on the Disney yeah. plus show and then be part of the creative conversation. Like, but I'll never get that marriage of material and youth and, and what I love to do. And, you know, uh, and, and then that it hits a nerve, you know, that continues to find new people is, um, it's just, I'm incredibly thankful and, um, 
and if ever I'm feeling frustrated or yeah. whatever, I just think, look at what you have, you look at this thing you have. And, you know, and, and I do feel a real um, responsibility to it too, because as a result, you know, I mentor young girls who, some of whom have never seen it and don't care, but it just, it, that age group and their moms or, you know, who were the core of our audience, even though I know you were a reluctant um, viewer <laughs> as well. <laughs> You were part of the wives. Uh, no were, jokes. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but it just, you know, I think I would have had a connection to that anyway, because I just remember my adolescence so well, but that it gives especially young girls something to, you know, look up to or be inspired by is, is a really big deal. And, um, and so not that I would do this anyway, but you know, if I get sent like a horror movie or something, I'm like, I don't want, I don't want Laura, like, cause you know, I carry that, no, I carry don't. her with me no, no matter where yeah. I go, so. You can't do uh, that to Laura Lai. <laughs> I can't do it anymore. You know. <laughs> oh, unfortunately we're running out of time, but I have two very quick ones. Um, yeah. You received a SAG and a Golden Globe nomination for Laura Lai, but the Emmys had a blind spot for that show. And I'm, I'm sure it's been brought up with you before, but were you aware of the outrage amongst fans and critics that you were never nominated at the Emmys? Cause it's still something that I will never ever get over. Well, I was aware of it only because I'd get interviewed about it every year. And then I remember, <laughs> I remember because uh, you may know, but I, I, as a sensitive person, I try to stay out of yeah. anything that isn't just my day of work, but um, it comes to you in certain events and in certain instances. And I do remember one year there was something in the trades where they had literally changed the, the voting and they called it the Lorelei rule. And I, yeah. and I forget what the shift was. Well, oh, yeah. you know, one thing was as a voter, cause I am, I am now a voter, you tend to, you try to watch everything, but you vote for what you like and you already know. And I think so many people perhaps would not have thought that was a show for them. So yeah. it, it's, it doesn't, it didn't have the popularity in the, in the zeitgeist. It had its core people, but, um, you know, and it was on the network it was on where perhaps you think that's for young people, that's not, you know, worthy of um, that kind of, you know, attention. And so ultimately over time, I just wanted to bring in a win for my bosses. <laughs> and, yeah. and because there sometimes was an expectation of like, maybe it's this year, we changed the category or we, you know, we tried this and we did a campaign or whatever. Um, but ultimately, I think, you know, you, you have to just be gracious and um, not go into any job or any pursuit for the outcome. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Well, we have run out of time. Um, you are a two-time New York Times bestseller. You're writing again, which is fantastic because everyone has read Talking As Fast As I Can. If you haven't read it, go and get it and read it. Oh, um, nice. thank Lauren, you. thank you so much for your time today. It's nine years in the making. I finally got to speak to you and uh, good luck for your uh, Mighty Ducks project coming up. Let's not have it be another nine. <laughs> Look, I can only hope. Um, everybody go to Gold Derby, make your predictions, click subscribe. We've got plenty of contender chats just like this brilliant one with Lauren.